I would like to transition into more of the the positive stuff. And I will even throw Paul in there, right? Like I, I do think, and you mentioned it right up top, Devon, that was an NBA offense tonight. And they have not been an NBA offense for the other five games this season. I guess half of the Indiana game, but that looked like a real basketball team. And so much of it just came from having Paul George who can dribble and having Paul George be a consistent three-point threat that the Suns did not want to leave alone, right? Where you saw some pick and rolls and pick and pops that Maxi ran in both halves of this game where he turns the corner. And in earlier games this year, you probably have Caleb or Kelly in either corner, or maybe it's Caleb and at best like an Eric Gordon, whoever. Yeah. And in many cases, the defense is just loading up at the rim, right? Like he's running into not just Brooke Lopez, but Brooke Lopez and Giannis. He's running into not just Jakob Pertle, but it's Jakob Pertle and a second or sometimes three defenders at the rim. And there were a lot more opportunities tonight where Maxi turns the corner, screener hits his guy, and it's just him and the big man, right? And so he's just got to make the big man commit one way or another. He did a really good job of using his in-between game tonight, you know, hit some mid-range jumpers, hit some floaters. And then once he put the pressure on as a driver, I thought you really saw saw Maxi take that leap, take that step as a, a three-point shooter, hit a bunch of step backs in the second half. And not all of that, certainly, but some of that was that Paul George gave him the platform early to get some easy stuff where you don't have to fight so hard and work so hard for every single shot and every single make that you get. And he builds the confidence. He builds the early rhythm. And that allows him in the second half to just throw haymaker after haymaker. So I think the first person you see impacted by Paul's return unsurprisingly is the most talented teammate that he had on the floor with him. So I was, I I thought that was probably the best example I saw of this is the Paul effect uh, of him coming back is that Tyrese just has the world opened up for him to some degree. And then once he had it going, that was mostly him in the second half. Cause a lot of those threes he made, Paul was on the bench for. So hats hat off to Tyrese tonight for his performance and certainly an acknowledgement for Paul for the part he played in making that happen. Yeah, no, I mentioned before the game some of the the numbers, uh, specifically with Kelly and Caleb, uh, on drives to the the rim, and just having another floor spacer will help so much. That's certainly the case with Tyrese as well. Uh, but there's even like him, like Paul, just coming off of a screen and getting an easy shot at a three. The Sixers just don't have very many ways to generate threes consistently and him just being so much taller and being able to come off of a screen and just rise up and put pressure on defense like that. It was nice to see. And on that play, you know, he came off that, that pick and roll, got the three up. I think Yabu kicked it out for an off or got the offense rebound, kicked it out to Tyrese bang, catch and shoot three. They had two easy quality looks generated from threes. Whereas the first five games that was, you know, they were laboring to get any decent look for Tyrese. So it was real nice for that. And I also thought he was, it was real nice to just have another solid perimeter, you know, big perimeter defender. Uh, He had some real nice contests uh, as a weak side help defender that forced a couple of kickouts. Uh, He might end up being their second or third best rim protector, which shouldn't be the case when you're signing a 34 year old, you know, small forward, but this is a team that doesn't have a ton of rim protection, but just having another capable, you know, size defender to throw in there was, was real nice as well. 